Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is Friday. We've spent a great week talking about Psalms and bantering about the Bible. I've liked it too. <laughs> I appreciate uh, the, the person that kind of critiqued and said we should banter. We need yeah. to banter more right. about the Bible <laughs> right. and how, how it impacts culture. Maybe it'll yeah. stir up some stuff, right? Yeah. But uh, we have been talking all week about these 12 fellas right. and how they would feel, mm -hmm. uh, although that's all speculative. Mm -hmm. But when you've been burned alive, flayed in two, uh, crucified upside down, stoned, boiled alive, uh, all because you believe in the guy in the middle of the painting, right. it does make us look at our culture today and say, does the faith we have today warrant my willingness to be a warrior, my willingness to go to battle, my willingness to fight for it, my willingness to die for it, lose my family for it? Mm -hmm. And uh, all around the world, people do. Uh, American Christianity seems to be a little more complacent, maybe, than what you might find in other countries where there already is a threat of losing your life mm -hmm. or your family or uh, being thrown in prison or jail. And uh, in a weird way, we kind of see a little of that surfacing in America in different states where they're still keeping the church shut down. And I know there's several uh, churches that have just said, we don't really care. We're meeting anyway, and they're getting fined and all kind of things. But, right. you know, I mean, in relationship to losing your life, is a $1,000 fine the same? Right. You know, it's like, yeah, we'll pay it later. We'll get lawyers. We'll, but when a knife's at your throat, it does bear. Do, do we believe enough in this that if a knife was laid to our throat, we would die for it? Right. And, and I think it's always a good discussion to have. Yeah. I think in the funniest way, last year of 2020, we've seen coronavirus split the church down mm -hmm. the middle uh, with people that are very uh, angry that God's people are meeting back again with some like, no, we're the fired up ones. No, you're the foolish ones. And the kind of weird how politics and government has split the church down the middle, you know? And, but I think that's healthy. I think it's healthy to make us have conversations. What is the church? What is this thing we fight for? What is this thing we call the body of Christ? So let's jump yeah. in and just read it. Okay. That's Psalm 55 today. All right. uh, and then uh, I just want to kind of wrap up some of our thoughts from this week. We've had some really good conversation, I think, that have challenged me to think about some things. Verse 1 of Psalm 55, listen to my prayer, O God, and do not ignore my cry for help. Please listen and answer me, for I'm overwhelmed by my troubles. My enemies shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. My heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I cannot stop talk, shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, then I would fly away and rest. I'd fly far away to the quiet wilderness. How quickly I would escape from this wild storm of hatred. Confuse them, Lord, and frustrate their plans, for I see violence and conflict in the city. Its walls are patrolled day and night against invaders, but the real danger is wickedness within the city. Everything is falling apart. Threats and cheating are rampant in the streets. It is not an enemy he taunts me. I can bear that. It is not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. I could have hidden from them. Instead, it is you, my equal, my companion and close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together to the house of God. Let death stalk my enemies. Let the grave swallow them alive, for evil makes its home within them. But I will call on the Lord, and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night, I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. He ransoms me and keeps me safe from the battle waged against me, though many still oppose me. God, who has ruled forever, will hear me and humble them. For my enemies refuse to change their way. They do not fear God. As for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke his promises. His words are as smooth as butter, but in his heart is war. His words are soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he'll take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young, but I am trusting you to save me. Verse 10, and, and I think this is a good wrap-up for the week. Uh, how the walls, its walls are patrolled day and night against invaders, but the real danger is wickedness within the city. Yeah, You know what my opinion is? Mm -hmm. It's an only opinion. I don't think the trouble of the church is our government. Right. I don't think it's Biden versus Trump. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's 
whether we're passing another three trillion dollar stimulus, I think the real danger of the church is inside our own walls. Yeah, it's us. us. It's uh, the division against each other. Mm-hmm. And I said that this week: how the church, just over government and mm-hmm. politics, since uh, the election of 2016, with uh, President Trump being elected to, to 2020. There has come a division in God's body where we can't even fellowship together. Mm -hmm. You believe in a Trump, you're a Republican, and I'm a Democrat. I'm sorry, we can't fellowship together. How dare you? We split. We go to other churches. Mm -hmm. You're a Trump supporter. You're a racist. You're this. You're a Democrat. Can't believe you're killing babies. Well, I can't believe you support a homophobe racist. And and that's God's people. Yeah. Split right down the middle. Right. Perfectly well to destroy fellowship in the body of Christ because politics became our God. Right. Our agendas became our God. And we let the Bible go to the wayside and we started running after social, cultural norms being our God. And therefore, the body of Christ split. Fast forward to 2020. Uh, you know, I've been said at the top of 2020, buckle up, get ready. It's an election year. It'll be crazy. Yeah. And sure enough, one of the craziest years ever, uh, the hatred of politics, the destruction in American cities, the division in God's people, the uh, splitting between Biden and Trump in, in the house of God, people who can't even fellowship together in their own families. Yeah. Father's mad at kids, won't even talk to kids. People are calling me going, would you pray for me. I can't even talk to my family because they're a different political belief than I am. Mm -hmm. And they're all Christians, right? You're wrong. No, you're wrong. Can't believe you voted that way. Well, how could you vote that way? If you're a real Christian, you shouldn't ever. And uh, I think David's so true. I think Paul was true prophetically with the Ephesians standing on the seashore when he said, you know, the real problem is it's the wolves that come inside. Yeah. It's the internal battles that I think when I look over assessing uh, this thing called Christianity and in my culture, uh, you know, man, you cannot shut down the church with government. Yeah, right. It doesn't work. Yeah, right. It hasn't worked for centuries. Yeah. Every time a political regime tries to shut down God's people, we multiply yes. like roaches right. everywhere. Right. Uh, you persecute us, we just explode. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you want to kill us, how do you do it? You get inside, right. wickedness from within, you corrupt the faith, you get people lustful, you get them lazy, you get us thinking, you said it the other day, more about ourselves, mm-hmm. our agendas, our religious agendas, mm-hmm. and you kill them that way. Right. And David said it. He said, you really want to know the problem? They're patrolling the walls, yeah. but the real enemy's inside. Yeah. And I think, what, what's your opinion on that? I mean, you grew up, you've, you've been in church a long time. Mm-hmm. What's your opinion on the external forces against us versus the internal forces? I think on the external forces, I expect you to throw <clears throat> daggers at me. I expect you to persecute me. My expectation is that you're not going to we're not going to live on the same playing field when you're on the external, when you're on the outside of it. I expect you to cuss me out and not really understand my beliefs and all that. But when we're arm in arm, when we're in the trenches together, when we're fighting together, my expectation is that you have my back. My mm-hmm. expectation is that you're gonna you're gonna encourage me and pray for me and and love me and and help me out when I need it. But all the while, it seems like sometimes those that are in the trenches with me, while I'm down and out, will kick me, spit on me, curse me out. That's not my expectation. I mm-hmm. and I think that's what David's saying is like mm-hmm. we used to walk to the house of God together, but mm-hmm. now you're. You, you know, it's it's like your your words are like lotion on top, but mm-hmm. <laughs> daggers underneath. Yeah, sure. Um, and so that I think that is so true that so many Christians will will do that that mm-hmm. within that we don't have to worry about that out there. Mm-hmm. That we're just mm-hmm. doing it to each other. Yeah, I was on a date with Robin the other night, and we were just yakking about life. And I said it's amazing to me how many Christians that love Jesus today mm-hmm. that I meet who are hurt disillusioned, not because of the world, but because another Christian leader, a pastor, a Christian friend, a brother or sister in Christ yeah. has done them wrong, right. hurt them, disillusioned them. They've dropped out of church. They've quit serving. Mm-hmm. They've lost faith in God's people, not because the government is supporting abortion, not because they told us to quit praying in schools, but simply from an internalized warfare 
that spreads, Paul says, like a cancer right. and literally eats the body of Christ. I think that's why this group of fellows here in Acts, when, once they were in the upper room and once the power of the Holy Spirit fell, by the time we get to Acts chapter 5, we have the weirdest story ever right. of Ananias and Sapphira. Right. And Peter looks at him and says, oh, no, mm-hmm. no, that is not going to be here. In this, in this right, gathering. Right. And both of them drop dead for lying to the Holy Spirit. Fast forward to Corinthians. Paul says to the guy sleeping with his mother-in-law, no, that's not going to be here. Yeah. You can't police this. This won't, this won't be here. This has got to be put out. Uh, we will not allow this to happen. And you even just try to bring up church discipline today. <laughs> it just, it just causes the hair on the back of your neck to stand up. Yeah. Uh, because of the abuses and right. because of the perversion and because of the sex scandals and because God told me to tell you to tell. <laughs> and so what you end up with is an anemic thing called church mm-hmm. uh, because now who really is right? right. Uh, I always you know, make a joke about the Catholic church. One thing they have going, they have one dude at the top that's making the decision. You yeah. like it or you don't. Yeah. And, and with our Protestant churches, there's so many variants and so many beliefs and so many streams to swim in. And so many that we all just swim thinking we're right. Mm -hmm. And maybe we are, maybe we aren't, but it's hard to fight for that. So we have to pull ourselves back together as a body and say, what, what would everybody who claims to be a Christian be willing to die for? You know, is it, is it, can we wear blue jeans or get tattoos? We die for that. Or is it what we've always said that we're, we're going to die because he's a resurrected Lord. And that's what the church represents. We represent the body of Christ on the earth as witnesses to his resurrection or the light of the world or the salt of the earth. And I think my opinion this year, you're going to see that raise up. You're going to see a generation of young men and women passionate to run after that God, passionate to run after that kind of uh, a willingness to die to themselves and to say, I want to be the generation that, uh, you know, here's a weird word, to resurrect the true church, the, the church that's going to, as you said uh, a few days ago, in the last days, many will fall away, but there will be a remnant left of God's people. Yeah. Though narrow it may be, narrow the way, and many there be that, you know, come, but few are chosen. I, I think you kind of see that. And, right. and the weird thing about it is both sides probably feel like they're the narrow way. And and hence, we... we we find ourselves in a generation where we got to run with what we believe, you know, what we Amen. passionately hold to. And I guess I would say to that is whatever that is, would you die for it? Right. That's and if question. you won't, you need to rethink what you're believing in and what you're fighting for. And uh, otherwise, it's a futile faith if I'm not willing to be the warrior and to go to war for it. Right. And, dude, thank you for hanging out with me thank this you. week. I enjoyed it. It was fun. I'll see you Monday. Have a great week. Ryan and I love you. Bless you.